So in this video, we're gonna talk about if you didn't get a place at medical school and you want to try to go to university and then transfer into medicine from there, how you can do that. Now, before we actually dive into the universities and what degree you have to do and what the options are, and I'm gonna list all of them, what we want to make sure first, and bear in mind, is that it is a very risky thing to be doing. In this video, I talked about gap years and talked about what to do if you don't get a place and maybe you're an undergrad and you don't wanna waste that year and you want to go to university and get a degree. Just remember that firstly, what I'm about to tell you about that internal transfer is not a guarantee. The second thing to bear in mind is if it isn't a guarantee and then you end up with, let's say, a biomedical science degree, for example, which is what most people do, and you're then going to try and apply to medicine as a grad, grad medicine is way, way more competitive to get into than regular undergrad medicine. Also, if you're trying to get into the five-year degree as a grad, you don't get the student loan uh, same benefits that you get if you're going into a four-year GEM course. Again, the GEM courses are a lot more competitive in some cases. It gets very complicated. If you'd like some guidance with that, check out the Future.Program program because we help a lot of grads doing that. However, the other thing to bear in mind is that it might be worth taking a gap year and just applying to undergrad medicine again because it is way less competitive than going as a grad. So just something to bear in mind if you're in this whole thing that you're considering, I don't wanna waste a year and I really just wanna get a degree and I don't, I wanna feel like I'm making progress because at that age, a year feels like a lot of time. I totally understand that. But let's say you do take a gap year, you go again and you get in that time, that is still shorter than going via the degree route. Route. So just something to bear in mind. So if you really do decide to ignore my advice and go down this transfer route, here are some universities that you may want to consider. So the first university is Anglia Ruskin. The degrees it's applicable to are the BSc Honours in Medical Science at the Chelmsford campus, the BSc Honours in Biomedical Science at the Cambridge campus and the M Optom Honours um, optometry in Cambridge campus as well. Students can transfer after completing the first year of the relevant degree and they must achieve a minimum average mark of 75% across the first year with no less than 65 in any one module. A current UCAT score and meeting GCSE requirements are also necessary. Applications are still made through UCAS and successful candidates enter year one of the five year MBCHB program. Anglia Ruskin have five places available for this and they typically have in the region of about 60 applicants each year. Second is the University of Bradford. This is for the foundation in clinical sciences and medicine leading to a BSc in clinical sciences. This is also after completing the foundation year. This one has 20 places available. Students apply to Sheffield via UCAS after obtaining end of year results requiring an average of at least 70% including 70% in chemistry with no failed assessments. Meeting Sheffield's UCAT threshold threshold and at least two widening participation criteria are also required. So really need to make sure that you meet those widening participation criteria to even consider this one. Successful applicants enter year one of the five year MBCHB program as you'd expect. Then we have the University of Brighton, which if you do the Biomedical Sciences BSc Honours, you can apply either after the first year or after the final year, and there is no limit on the number of places available. Eligible students are guaranteed an interview with BSMS, so if you're a good interviewer and you think that you can get to that stage, it's maybe a good option to consider. A current UCAT score and specific academic criteria are required, including GCSEs and A-levels. They must be met and applications, again, are made via UCAS. Then we have Cardiff University who are a very interesting one because they offer a GEM course, but it's only two selected courses. So a very important one to pay particular attention to. So people can transfer if they've done the BSc honors in medical pharmacology, biomedical sciences, medical sciences at the University of South Wales as well, at the B Med Sci or the medical sciences at Bangor University. So not just at Cardiff University to bear in mind. And that is after completing the degree. So this is different from the other ones where it's a transfer. This is actually basically feeder courses as they call them that are designed, not designed, but they are acknowledged as ones that can go on to progress to do the GEM course, the Graduate Entry Medicine four-year course at Cardiff, but basically only chooses people exclusively from those degrees. So graduates from these feeder stream degrees can apply for the four-year Graduate Entry Medicine program, as we said, at Cardiff, so A101. Applicants must achieve at least a 2-1 degree and meet other eligibility criteria, including the GAMSAT exam. Successful candidates enter year two of the medicine program. So it's not really a four-year program, it's that you enter 
it one year into or the second year of the five year program. Next is the University of Exeter. The degrees applicable here are the BSc Medical Sciences and the BSc in Neuroscience. This is in the final year of the degree that allows you to transfer. Exeter say that students predicted to achieve a 2-1 or a first class degree with no significant issues during their studies can apply for medicine. And then the eligible candidates are shortlisted for interview. Then we have the University of Leicester who allow you to transfer after completing the first year. They have three or four Four places sometimes and those are available to people doing biological sciences, medical sciences, chemistry, natural sciences and psychology. Considerations include first year academic achievement, A-level qualifications, UCAT score, personal statement, commitment to medicine and references. So typical stuff that you would see on a normal medicine application. High school candidates are invited for MMI, multiple mini interviews, as you'll know. Successful applicants join year one of the five year program, again, as you'd expect. There's also a competitive transfer route from clinical sciences to year two of medicine as well. So if you don't get it on the first year, you can also have a second stab. If you're on the clinical sciences uh, degree, you can try again next year as well. Next up, Newcastle University, who have seven places available for transfer and no limit on how many people can apply. This is available for people who are on, no surprise, the biomedical sciences course and the biomolecular sciences as well. So this is after completing stage one, which is their first year. Applicants must have a minimum average mark of 70% across stage one with no less than 65% in any one module and provide a current UCAT score, excluding the SJT band four. So if you get an SJT band four, you're out of the process. Successful candidates transfer into year one of the MBBS program. MBBS, MBCHB, both basically the same thing, the just different titles that you get at the end of the medical degree, both pretty much exactly the same. Then the University of Plymouth has 10 places available for transfer. However, there's a limit on the number of people they will interview, which is only 20. So if you get to that interview stage, you've got a one in two chance of getting in. Now, this is available to people who do a BSc Honours in Biomedical Science and a BSc Honours in Human Biosciences. It's also after completing stage one, which is the first year. Applicants must achieve A, B, B, A level, including specified subjects, or equivalent qualifications and a minimum of 70% average across year one modules and pass an interview. UCAT is not required for this one and as you'd expect transferring after just a year of university you go into the first year of the medical course. And, and as I'm sure you've probably picked up by now it's if you have to do the whole degree and transfer after the third year you can maybe go into the second year of the medicine course but if you just transfer after just completing one year you're not gonna jump any years for medicine, you're gonna go in at the first year. Then we have Queen Mary's University of London, also known as the Barts. This one is a little bit confusing, so I'll explain, but it's about 19 places available. This is available to people who take the degrees of pharmacology and innovative therapeutics. Surprise, surprise, biomedical sciences is in there and also neuroscience. Now, the top 19 students are guaranteed an interview for the five year MBBS course, selected based on academic ranking, which is 50% of the weighting, and then UCAT score, which is the other 50%. So the top five who've done really well, instead of starting at the bottom of the five year program, they go into the bottom of the four year gem course. For, so obviously shave a year off their studies. One that's worth mentioning as an update is the St. George's University of London. As of 2022, St. George's no longer offers a transfer to medicine program from the biomedical sciences students as they used to. And last but certainly not least, we have the University of Sussex, a fairly new kid on the block. They don't have any data for how many places they have available, but they have no limit on the number of people that can apply. What happens here is people doing, for the millionth time, Biomedical Sciences, BSc, Honours and MSci, and finally the Pharmacy M Farm. Students can apply to this either after the first year or after the final year. And for this, eligible students are guaranteed an interview with Brighton and Sussex Medical School that we talked about earlier. Specific academic criteria include GCSE and A-level requirements. They must be met along with a current UCAT score and applications are made through UCAS. So there you have it. If you have your heart set on going to university and trying an internal transfer, those are the options available to you. Remember that I said, really strongly consider taking a gap year and having a second attempt because it will make your life 
a lot easier, it'll give you a lot more control. And like I say, with that clear focus and single-mindedness on that application, you can massively improve your performance and make this chance or make this time a lot higher chance of you succeeding. If you would like some help, as always, check out this video here to find out how you can get some help with the FutureDoc program. We've always helped lots of people who were re-applicants who really not done very well on several attempts sometimes and then come to us and we've got them in. So really worth checking out if you're in that boat. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Best of luck with however you get your route into medicine and I'll see you in the next video.